Jesus Christ, that made me jump. <laughs> Today I walk in the footsteps of criminals, gangsters, and probably bump into a few Peaky Blinders. Come with me to the lockup. Welcome to Through Lucy's Lens and welcome back to Birmingham. Going somewhere else really exciting today and somewhere with a real connection to my own family history. We are going to Steel House Lane Lockup. This is a prison essentially. It was built in 1839 and it was used right up until 1996 to house prisoners, usually on a temporary basis before they went next door to the Victoria Law Courts. Some really notorious people have been incarcerated here and apparently it's also a little bit haunted. So before I carry on, please like and subscribe. Every week I go somewhere different. We don't know where, but it'll be somewhere I think is exciting. So let's go. <laughs> Before I go into the museum, I found this incredible cafe right across the road from the Victoria Law Courts. Beautiful, treating myself to a, a posh one before I go in. Gonna give you a little bit more background about why I'm so interested to go here. So most people in Birmingham are gonna have an ancestor or two that have spent a couple of nights over in this lockup. I certainly have. And I was doing some family research and my great great grandfather kept coming up as a bit of a rotter and he has been in this lockup no more than 37 times between 1892 and 1945 so you know a bit of a rotter he spent time in this lockup before being sent out to Pentonville strange ways he has been I don't even know how he got out to do more crime because he was back in and out in and out he actually turned out to be a bit of a vagrant. The family don't really talk about him. So I want to go and see if I can find mugshot. I'm not sure. This museum has got the biggest collection of kind of late Edwardian mugshots in the world. So if I can't find a picture of him here, I'm not going to find a picture of him anywhere. So that's why I'm desperate to go. I feel a real connection with this place. He isn't the only member in my family that spent a night in this locker, if I tell you. So I'm really excited to go and have a look feeling quite nervous really about what it's going to be like and I'm very interested in crime and punishment, always have been. So I'm going to have my coffee and my posh scrambled eggs and then we're going to go across when my booking is at 12.30 to go and have a look around this incredible locker. This is Victoria Law Courts. This is the Magistrates Court in Birmingham and still is to this day and the lockup is on the back of this. So Birmingham had always wanted an assize court and they campaigned for an assize court. And in the late 1800s, they got one. And this was built on the site of an old workhouse. So this place has always been quite a sad place. It's an incredible red brick building that I've driven past so many times. So Steel House Lane lockup is on the back of this and there is a secret tunnel that brings prisoners through to the magistrate's court where they can do their pleading. This is Coleridge Passage that runs down the side of the law courts and this was the space where the workhouse originally was. So if you look back into 18th century documents, you can see Coleridge Passage being the address of the workhouse that later became an asylum that once stood here and you can see all these fascinating entrances. I believe if you walk further down here, you can see the original judge's entrance. So I'll go and see if I can find that. Here is the magistrate's entrance with original features like the boot scraper. And when you come down the side of these buildings, you can really appreciate how old and imposing they really are. As I stand on Coleridge Passage, this here is the Magistrates Court. 
this is the lockup. So there is a passage that runs from the lockup underneath through into the law courts. I will try and find the entrance to the passage in the lockup, but that is how close they are together. So they were built at the same time. So people could be housed here and then took across to the magistrate's court to plea. It was closed as a place of detention in 1996 and it has been turned into a museum. So that's why we can go and look around. There was a lot of campaigning to save this building and it's been opened as a mu museum. So anyone can go and have a look around, have a look in the archives. Hope it's fascinating. Never been before. Let's go and have a look. As you come in, we have got the original booking desk and then you come round. Let's go in to the lockup. Wow. Oh my God, I wasn't expecting this. This is amazing. Although I'm sure it wasn't amazing if you've ever spent time here. I'm sure it was absolutely disgusting. What a place that I didn't know was here. Jesus Christ, that made me jump. Oh, wow. <laughs> there are three levels of cells. So we've got the top, the middle, and then down in the basement. And the cells get smaller as you go along. Apparently women were kept in the smaller cells, men in the larger cells. And during the summer, the cells up the top became incredibly hot because of the greenhouse effect of that glass roof. And they were unable to keep prisoners up there in the summer because it was too hot. Let me know in the comments if you, if you, you were here, you know, you may have been, people in my family were for sure. Still got some of the original features here where the guards could establish availability in the hotel. <laughs> Let's free everybody. Let's free everybody in the lockup. Quiet day. Let's go into a cell and talk about some of the people who have resided for their sins <laughs> or not. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people here that were not guilty too. Wow, this feels weird. There were 70 cells here in total and they were operating until 2016, so really, really recently. And there were three kinds of prisoner that would be brought here, men and women. First of all, there were the Steelhouse Lane prisoners they were people that had been arrested from all over the city of Birmingham and were brought here for usually 24 hours before they appeared at court across the way. Unless you were arrested on a Friday, in which case you might have had the misfortune of spending the whole weekend here. Secondly, there were the lockup prisoners and they were people who were brought from other facilities all around the country to their court case here at Birmingham Victoria Courts. They were brought here in prison vans in the morning, dropped off, they were held here, went to court, and then went back to wherever they were on remand. Maybe they were set free. And that was the second kind of prisoner. And finally, home office prisoners. Now they were people who spent longer than 24 hours here and actually served part of their sentence in this lockup. A good example of that was after the Strange Ways prison riot, several men were incarcerated here for an amount of time so it was used almost like a small prison rather than a lockup so there has been time where there's been long-term prisoners staying here as well so they are the three kinds of prisoners that were locked up here men and women pretty much mixed women towards one end of the corridor men towards the other and that is what took place here for nearly a hundred years this is one of the cells that they've left as it was in 1996. So you're looking out onto a main landing and then you have a toilet and the flush for the toilet is outside. 
and then behind me there is a wooden bench to lie on looks comfortable doesn't it i can tell you it isn't i've just got off it and my bum hurts so these are the sort of cells that you can see here So you can go in pretty much all the cells. What if we get locked in? <laughs> oh, blimey. Places don't usually make me feel nervous, but this place is heavy. That looks comfortable, doesn't it? Bloody hell. Oh, there's graffiti on it as well. And a convenient pencil for anyone that wants to continue the trend. And again, the toilet. Should we have a look what it would be like to look out of a cell? Oh God, I hope the door doesn't shut, imagine. There you go, look. I want a drink. I want a drink. Take a walk around the top landing. This wall here was put here to separate prisoners so you've got steel house lane prisoners and then you've got prisoners that were brought in to go to court and they tried to keep them separate. So that wall separates them here. Women would have been at this end, men this end. Just really feels, it feels real <laughs> to be honest. Lots of nooks and crannies to look around. And then of course, you can pop yourself back into a cell. It's really nice, they just let you get on with it. And I love that. I love it when you can come to a place like this and just have a look around. And say, Whoa, God, everything keeps making me jump, man. Yeah, I'm really jump. This place feels really oppressive and I'm not into the kind of mumbo jumbo, so spooky stuff, but just feel, Oppressive, of course it does. So many people that were in this building were in emotional pain or physical pain. And I'm a bit of an empath and I can feel it and it's making me a bit jumpy and a bit weird. And actually there was a episode of Most Haunted filmed here. I tried to watch it last week, kind of doing some research and I decided, no, nah, it's, <laughs> it's really over the top. But they did find a lot of stuff here, strange noises. See here that slamming? slamming, flip-flopping, all that sort of noises. Yeah, so I just feel a little bit hyper aware. <laughs> Let's go into this cell, one of the listed cells and talk about who may or may not have been locked up here. First thing to say about these cells is they're so hot. It's winter now, so God knows what this must have been like in the summer. Absolutely boiling, I have to take my coat off. So let's talk about some of the people that could have been locked up here. Now some of them, because of the nature of their cases, there's no evidence, but it could have been that they were booked in under a pseudonym, but they were here because people have talked about the fact. So, First one is Fred West, notorious serial killer. There is no paperwork that can fact check that. However, people say he was and the cell that he was in down in the basement. Also, Ruth Ellis, the last woman to be hung in the UK, she was here. The Birmingham Six, you will have heard of those, the IRA bombers. And then also during the Strange Ways riot, this was used as a holding detention centre after the riots in the prison. And then of course, the Peaky Blinders. If you don't know who the Peaky Blinders are, quick chat about that. They were essentially criminal gangs that ran around Birmingham in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and they have been immortalised by Stephen Knight's drama set in Birmingham about the Peaky Blinders. Now, do I watch the Peaky Blinders? Not really, because as a Brummie and as somebody who is related to a real one, they weren't nice people. And sometimes I feel 
a little bit irritated how the kind of criminality has been glamorised. I think it should be a little bit more realistic because these men were awful. They ruined lives, they left women destitute, they murdered, they robbed. They weren't there to give anybody a purpose really other than upsetting people and things like nobody was ever made the mayor of Birmingham or anything like that. So we all get, I mean obviously in film land it gets a little bit but the research I've been doing about my grandfather, he's not the sort of person, sorry, great-grandfather, he's not the sort of person that you'd be proud of. And my family obviously weren't proud of him because there is not a photo, there is not a record, nobody talks about him. And that's the damage that these Peaky Blinders did to real people in the city of Birmingham. And I'm sat in one of the cells where one of them could have been. Or maybe two, I don't know. I'm presuming these were usually single cells. Here in cell G4, we have got something particularly gross. So this cell, executions were not taking place here. There was no hangings at this place. This isn't a prison, this is a lockup. But there would have been capital punishment in regards to using the birch. And this is a birching stool that people could be beaten with as punishment and it was used until 1948 and sometimes children were birched I mean for god's sake on this birch install and this is the original one so there's some more information I mean the, the minor things that people could have been birched for were ridiculous stealing a loaf of bread I get that sometimes people say that kids have it easy these days but I'm sorry that I do not agree with, and that actually feels quite gross to see it. And there's also a death mask here. This is Mary Bell, the last woman to be publicly hanged in Coventry. Was she here? I'm guessing she was at some point because they've got her death mask. Freaky. So like I say, no executions actually took place here, but they did take place just up the road at Winston Green Prison. So some of the people that were here would have gone to Winston Green Prison and sadly met their maker there. Even before 1996, when this place was, I'm getting more confident closing doors on me now, <laughs> when this place was still used, they wanted to list some of these cells to keep their original features. So these are the listed cells, grade two listed with the original porcelain toilets and the original graffiti. <laughs> what have we got here? Outlaws. I love graffiti. As you can see, some of it is, you know, not that long ago. You've still got the call button here, whether that got answered or not. And then there's still the original message. Taking drugs, want to give up for free advice, ask the custody staff for an arrest referral worker. Maybe someone could comment if that actually ever happened. <laughs> and we've still got the original. Oh look, the Boldmere boys representing North Birmingham, Coventry. Amazing. This cell contains a number of these incredible mug shots. We have tried so hard to find a picture of my great great granddad. His name was Arthur Gardner, by the way. If there's any uh, willing historians out there, we've looked everywhere. The museum is still looking. There probably was a photo of him somewhere, but of course, not all of them were kept. Many were disposed of. But isn't it lovely that we've got? So I just love looking into these people's eyes. There's some that go right back to the 1850s. I mean, look at this poor woman. <laughs> Looks a bit like Max Brannan from EastEnders, sorry. <laughs> so as well as the, you know, actually being here in the lockup itself, there is a lot here about the history of policing, about the history of crime and punishment. It's a really immersive experience, actually, and I can't believe that it's been here so long and I've never been.
This room at the end of the basement used to be the kitchen. So there's a photo here of this space in the 1920s when it was used as the kitchen and I guess staff room here. And you can still see when I come around here where that photo was taken and some of the original cuffs are still on the wall. Also used to be a cat live here to keep the vermin down. Birmingham was one of the first places to take mug shots and they've got the best collection of original mug shots from the late 1800s here in the world. And they still have the camera set up where these were taken. I believe actually they were taken upstairs because the light was better, but they've got the original equipment. And then you've got an example. This one's from 1860, Richard Heath. Got eight months for stealing a pound. Amazing. I love how I love how brutal they are. Going bold, front of head. When I read my great granddad's, he apparently he's got a tattoo on his face, which for the time is really really unusual. In fact, this guy's got a tattoo of a chicken. You and me both, Richard Heath. I actually have a tattoo of a chicken. Less said about that, the better. Let's go for a bit more of a mooch around. I found the passage. This is Coleridge Passage that still to this day goes through to the law courts. Obviously you can't go through now because the court is in session and it's, I think it's, perm yeah, it's permanently locked now. Look at that. But this was the passage that took you to the back of the law courts from the lockup. In some of the cells now, there's, you know, they've created an educational space, something about fingerprints in this one. It asked me, do I want my fingerprints taken? No, no, I don't want my fingerprints taken, actually. I'm cool, I'm cool with not having my fingerprints taken. Oh, blimey. They really have left it as it was. The showers. I'm guessing one person at a time. I don't want to use the how many people could fit in this shower line. We're quite few, but I doubt that happened. These are all from, I mean, like I say, didn't close that long ago. window open for ventilation there. It is, I'm gonna say it again, it's so hot up here. And with that shower on, it must have been roasting. If you like your transport options, they've got some really nice old police vehicles on display. There's actually a full size horse downstairs as well. Not an actual horse, a plastic horse, but it's massive. Honestly, it's, lo it's not lovely here. It's actually quite gross, but it's a fantastic experience and a place that I've heard so much about and you can actually come and see it. There's a roll of honour in here. I'm guessing has been put, this wouldn't have been in a cell, but a roll of honour for members of the police force who fought in the First World War. And of course, we can't come away from the fact that the men and women who did the policing have got a really ruddy hard job. So they are celebrated here too. And moving on from that, actually, there is actually some special mentions for police officers who lost their life in the line of duty in Birmingham. Some quite, quite recently, actually. I remember this lady. And then also Michael Hunt, who was murdered on duty. Only 
Thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I did making it. Here he is, our own little Peaky Blinder, Arthur Gardner. I'm not sure he looks like a very nice chap. I'll see you on the next one.